the smartest guys around are about to break it down like they won the game a million times. Well, actually, they didn't really win the game at all. Where is Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that is right. Hold on. I've got to switch the screen up. I already blew it already, but we'll go get black like it's not being blown for the podcast. Stephen Fishback, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, Rob. How are you? Yeah, doing... I mean, I'm terrible. Let me let me amend that. I'm I'm t- oh, oh, are we up? Are we live? <laughs> yeah, oh. we're 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 uh, good. Okay. We're good. I um I'm terrible. That I legitimately got teary-eyed at that vote. And teary-eyed. and they were milking Yes, the the survivor uh, story was milking it with that music, that heartrending music, that that shot of the smuffed torch smoking into the air, uh, and uh, yeah, I, it seemed like the players themselves could not believe what had just happened. They were rubbing their faces. Mike was chuckling nervously to himself. Yes, but amazing move, uh, Mike White. Great move uh, by Mike, and uh, really finally eliminating someone who has been a huge target for the entire show so far a lot going on here in this episode and i really had to like uh, go through my notes to figure out exactly what happened because i think this was one of the more confusing votes that we've seen it really turned into a uh, circular firing squad there by the end of the episode with who was going for who so we can uh, break that all down for you here tonight as steven and i try to parse through exactly what happened as we get ready for this final week of the survivor regular season as one week from tonight we'll crown the winner of survivor david versus goliath wow wow and i'll be in on my honeymoon i will have no idea who won and i'll just have to uh you know yeah wait till i get back yeah why well, you uh, you guys won't be glued to the three-hour finale on your honeymoon <laughs> steven i don't know i mean i guess there's nothing more romantic than seeing yeah, so i guess uh, if things go horribly wrong yeah, uh, yeah the survivor finale <laughs> to turn back to but uh steven we've got uh, so much coming up here i will speak with christian hubicki on the survivor oh. exit interview uh sad to say that that will be the case on thursday morning so uh, be on the lookout for that one, uh, hopefully uh, it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of six hours in terms of talking to Christian on the exit interview. And then uh, your friends and mine, uh, Jeremy and Val Collins, will join me on the mm. Survivor the recap. Double. Yeah. The double. Yeah. The double team. I love it. And so I'll talk to them. And then Mike Bloom on the Survivor feedback show. And then I'll get into everything uh, on the final wand off and everything from the Wiggle Room with Josh Wiggler coming up uh, this weekend. But Stephen... Uh, really, it was a quiet night for Christian, and I, and I think yeah. that that really kind of threw us off in terms of like, well, nobody's talking about Christian too much tonight. It was all about Nick and where's Davey? Where is Davey? <laughs> Um, it was definitely a misdirection, which I loved. You know, Christian was there. He was obviously talked about. You had Mike campaigning to to get him out, but it really didn't seem like it was going to take. And I actually loved that. I loved that narratively, the the surprise of it, because you know Christian has been a big red herring, a big target almost every episode. Can I say? I just want to say, as heartbroken as I am that Christian has gone out, I'm almost more narratively satisfied that he's going out. I, I I think it would have been almost like too much to see Christian win the season. It was just like too, I mean, like too overdetermined. He was so big, such a dominant character to see him go on and then win. It just would have like, there's something like, it's like when Ned Stark dies, you know, then oh! suddenly you have a <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. If you're if you if that's a spoiler to you, you had it coming. You're, yeah. Okay. So the, it almost feels like that these there's something about us in the human condition. We don't want the obvious ending. It's it's too much yeah. to have the obvious ending. But do we want the complete out of nowhere ending? Because that that could be where we're headed. Well, I hope that is not where we're headed. Um, you know, I, I guess 
you know, I've, I've said that Kara's in a good spot. I do think now, by this point, if she won, it would sort of feel like an out of nowhere ending. But someone like Nick or Davey, that's certainly it. I mean, Nick oh, especially. Certainly. Is certainly yeah, certainly. Uh, now, let, I, I just want to run through the 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 headlines from tonight to yeah. sort of like yeah, how yeah, we yeah. got to how we got to this point because I think it's an right. in, an interesting ride in terms of how this all broke down. So the 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 night started with Nick hiding his fake idol with the real idol clue shades of uh, what Dominic did last season and this was very interesting Stephen and it, 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 it played brilliantly on the show but I wonder if this was maybe too cute because this really did set off this chain reaction of events which resulted in Nick having to waste his real idol where Nick presented to the group i have two idols now maybe and or at least to some people were thinking of does nick have two idols and then ultimately resulted in nick having no idols yeah no i agree i i loved the moment i loved the 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 thought behind it you know nick is such a fun creative thinker yes. and i write a little bit about about that in my blog tonight about how you know nick is a really a real innovator in this game and and, and some of the things he's done and and this was this was one of them. And Davey, too. You know, I think on any other season, like Nick and Davey are going to be this giant pair of, of uh, characters. But but um, I, it was such a fun moment. But I agree with you that it clearly is a little bit too cute. You know, the you don't want people to know you have advantages. Uh, and, and I think Nick's initial impulse of let me hide this and someone will find it. That's a great impulse. But then when it, the next step was like, oh, maybe I'll find it publicly that's like a less good impulse mm -hmm. yeah and i think it was just like a spur of the moment thing i don't know if he regretted it but ultimately that information flows back to davy and then davy says well hold on why is nick lying to me he didn't tell me that he was gonna do this and that creates the rift between davy and nick and then davy feels like the move is i need to blindside nick now we didn't get a lot of uh, look back in terms of christian and what he did with uh, uh, did did he intentionally get the read from from gabby in the last episode what he saw he didn't talk about that in the episode so maybe we can find out from uh, him on the exit interview but I, I maintained all week that i felt like that the bond between davy and christian was very strong heading into that and that there was information that was kept from nick and i think that we saw davy and christian on the same page throughout this entire episode tonight yeah i mean i think that's that's uh that's right. And, and in fact, they were the only two people who voted together for Allison mm -hmm. and everybody, everybody. It looked like, I mean, my guess and, you know, correct me if you're wrong, if you disagree with me. My guess is that the other five votes were a split vote. I that, think so, too. That, yeah. yeah. I, Angelina, Kara, Mike White, Nick and um, Allison all uh, voted together to split votes between Christian and Dave. Yes, I, that, let, let, but I want to keep walking through how we get there because I think that we uh, need some hand-holding in terms of what happened in this episode. So then Davey tells Christian, okay, we want, you know, he, he wants to get rid of Nick. That's, that's his yeah. idea for the plan. So he wins the reward and then he ends up taking Kara on the reward with Nick. Uh, we should stop down here. Such a great moment where Angelina <laughs> says, uh, you know, Nick, uh, or, you know, Davey, I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, I did, you know, have that thing with the rice, you know. And like, you won immunity and it was because I sat out. Like, is that kind of taking away from his immunity win? Like, <laughs> well, I, I did not have the desired yeah. result where he did not say. Um, I also like that Angelina in her confessionals uh, turned it into how she won rice for the tribe. That it also turned into <laughs> that, she, that it was not uh, just a negotiation, yeah. but she also, it was like a competition that she won for the group. But uh, yeah. such so, so many great moments with Angelina and and wanting to go on the reward with Davey. But so on the reward, then Davey has the opportunity, tells Kara, hey, we need to go for Nick. And Wait, can we and let, let me pause it here too, which is Davey taking Nick on the reward as a way of more effectively blindsiding him. I don't think I've ever seen that. Or certainly I don't think I've, I've ever heard anyone articulate yeah. that. Survivor. <laughs> Typically the reward you use to reward your allies, mm -hmm. you use it to bring someone in who is your enemy and you want to strategize with them. I don't think, I mean, but it's an actually a genius way is it though? to isolate someone. Okay. Well, because Nick can't plan right. with anybody else 
so he's stuck with you. If you're making a deal with Kara, then it, it for it, it totally isolates Nick from the tribe. Short term, yes, I think it's good. But but I wonder then if Nick ultimately did get blindsided by Davy in this episode, would that hurt more? And would it be almost something that that Nick would not get past if he got blindsided by Davy in the same round where he broke bread with him? It, it's a good to uh, like. W- was that where he sort of uh, gave him? Uh, like uh, brought him into the fold and then stabbed him with the knife. Oh, it's like the, oh, I'm not even going to, there's another game of Thrones. Yeah, spoiler, yeah, no, I know. Like, gonna... <laughs> You're just setting me yeah, up to like, offer enrage... him bread and salt. Yeah. yeah. Listen, if someone is going to vote me out of survivor, please take me on a reward first. You know, I would much, then you get the reward. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's you know, the high points of the okay. game? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset at someone just because they voted me out. It's interesting. Survivor. It's an interesting discussion. Okay. So Kara is all excited. She's like, yes. Okay. This is yeah. great. We are going to blindside Nick. I'm so excited. The best part about a blindside is you don't want to tell everybody about it. Uh, but she does want to tell Allison about it. And she goes back on the beach and says, Kara tells Allison, Great news. The, yeah. We're, we're going to blindside Nick. This is going to be great. Don't yeah. tell Angelina, but we're going to blindside Nick. This is going to be great. Allison, with that information, she goes to Mike White and That's says, great. hey, such a great Mike moment. White, yeah. guess what? We are going to blindside Nick. Okay? Uh, and Mike, at this point, is doesn't know what he's going to do. He says uh, he's going to surprise himself on this vote, and that is the ultimate blindside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're blind. Mike's blindsiding himself. Okay. That's hilarious. All right. But now we go to the immunity challenge. Mike White, kudos to Mike, wins immunity. And now uh, this is always fun when a survivor now has a, the ability to be immune because you can be loosey-goosey in terms of uh, making a big move. I know personally when I made the move against Alex at the final seven in Survivor the Amazon, I had immunity that round and I was sort of on the fence. Should I do it? Should I not do it? But having the immunity necklace, I think, does embolden one in terms of uh, taking a big swing. And I don't know if that factored into what Mike was thinking here, but uh, he definitely uh, came out more aggressive than we've seen him in the past. So... Well, certain. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Then Nick wants Allison out. That's Nick's, that's Nick's plan. And so he's throwing Allison's name out there. Kara thinks that's laughable that Nick wants Allison out because really the plan is going to be to blindside Nick at this tribal council. Yeah. Then this is where Mike White, he wants Christian out. And so he tells Allison, let's vote out Christian. Allison's like, no, we need we should vote out Nick and Kara. She wants Nick. So Mike is the only person in the room that wants Christian out. So Mike tells Nick, we need to vote out Christian, not Allison. Okay, And he breaks the news to him about uh, and, and, and that's what, that's what he wants to do. But Davey has a conversation with Nick and I know this is confusing even me talking about it. Okay. Now Davey reveals to Nick, Hey, that was fake what I did. And so Nick is back on, is back on board with Davey and Davey is back on board with Nick. They need to vote out Allison, but Mike has the conversation with Nick that changes everything. Yeah. And he tells him that Davey is coming for you. Yeah. And, and Nick, ra- reasonably, yeah. I we need to, to get Davy. We need to get Davy yeah. out. Yeah. That, that that was the one of the like. If Mike wants to target Christian, why say Davy is coming for you? Because then inherently Nick is going to say, "Great, let's take Davy out." Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, so Mike is the one who says in the episode, "You, Kara, and Nick should vote out Christian." So to your point, yes, I, I do believe that the five people who were working together on this vote were Mike, Kara, Nick, Angelina, and uh, let's see, uh, and Mike, Mike, Kara, Nick, Angelina, and Allison. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the, that was the fight. Even though Mike and Allison voted against Davey. Yes. And Davey and Christian voted against Allison. So three, well, Christian, three, two, two. Cri- Right. And Christian was obviously the, the uh, presumed target. And, uh, you know, presumably that's why um, Christian, I'm sorry, that's why Nick played his idol, right? It was because he was in on this split vote. If Nick, if, if Nick thought that, like, there were five votes going one way, well, because he was in on the split vote, he knew that just one person flipping one way or the other, he'd be out. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's, uh, 
pretty conservative of him. You know, obviously he was wrong, yeah. but I think it's definitely like the conservative play for Nick to play his idol. There. It was very conservative. Ironically, I think that Davey playing his idol spooked Nick to play his idol. And oh, yeah, totally. And ultimately, Davey finding the idol ends up being a, a bad thing for Nick and Davey. Right. Well, well, uh, not necessarily for, I guess, I guess because it like created a friction between, between Nick and, and Davey, but you know, it, it definitely hurts Nick in that he doesn't have any idols anymore. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Dave, Dave, Davey came out all right. I guess, I guess what you're saying is, is he and Christian were, were tight. Yeah. I don't think that Davey or Nick came out all right tonight. I think that this was a night where ultimately idols caused uh, Davey and Nick to be hoisted by their own slingshots in this episode where they end up, the, all this idol talk ends up with the two of them ultimately, uh, you know, gunning for each other at various points in the episode, both wasting an idol tonight. And now yep. with Christian gone being in the exact situation that they talked about that they didn't want to be in with four Goliaths and two Davids. And I think they're the next two obvious targets in the game. It's pretty amazing that the, the whole season was the, the Davids trying to come back from this Goliath deficit. Uh, and then in three successive episodes, Davids basically turn on themselves and, and vote themselves out. Um, slight uh, one quibble. Uh, David didn't actually waste his idol. David's idol had to be played at this travel council. Right. So he, uh, but he could, but he had the opportunity to uh, use it in a different way, potentially to save Chris. Although would he would have gone home at that point then if he played? Yeah, because I think then the vote yeah. split would have been. So I guess well, it would have been uh, yeah tied vote between Allison and him, and then a right. So the best move for Davy would have been to not play the idol. Uh yeah, that's. I mean, or, or I don't know. No impact. I actually think this is better for Davy because Nick not having an idol is better for Davy. In fact, it's great for Mike. I, I, right? dis because I disagree because I think that Davy that Davy and Nick could have been on the same page moving forward because I don't think that. Uh, I think that it's they, they Davy and Nick to have turned on each other, I think was ultimately a bad thing. And so now uh, I think they have to turn on each other at the next round just to get through another vote. Yeah, well, all the more reason why, if that's the case, which I don't necessarily agree, um, all the more reason that it serves Davy to not have let Nick have an idol. If Davy and Nick have to turn on each other and Nick has an idol, <laughs> Davy's screwed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is the opportunity that they could potentially, you know, uh, if they know where the vote is going, that they could potentially play the idol successfully and take out a number from the other side and potentially get it from four to two to three to two. And maybe they could swing somebody at the final five. If the Goliaths wanted to stay together, they could split votes on Davy and Nick next episode. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, but I think that now I think that Davy and Nick are in a very deep hole, and I'm not sure necessarily how either of them is able to climb out of it. I mean, I think, you know, I, I mean, it could just come down to an immunity win. It could come down. There probably will be one more idol, right? Like, what do we think? One more idol comes back in the game? One more idol does come back into the game. It is crazy to think that we're going into the final six with no idols and no advantages in the game. Wow, what a what a gift. What a gift from the Survivor Gods. I really have enjoyed the this is our last podcast together. So uh for this not season. ever. And not ever. Uh um, you yeah. know, but just for the season. Um, and I I have really enjoyed the pace of idols and advantages this season. There have been a few, they've been played sort of as the season has gone on, you know, and, and it's it's been nice. Yeah. It probably pound for pound, if you were to count out the number of idols and advantages that there has have been probably um, a the same number, I think it may be, you know, give or take uh, one. It would be interesting to see the numbers as, as, as the last couple of seasons. But I think in, in terms of the moments that they've been played, we've seen like two idols or two advantages played at tribal councils. So I think that that's also helped with the pacing. And they've been played at good moments and they haven't all yeah. sort of just like stockpiled at the end of the game where we have like an advantage get in situation next week. Right, exactly. So. I think for Davey, let's let's just talk about that uh, situation that he found himself in, the Chris Noble gambit. Do you think that that decision should have been easier for Davey than it ultimately was? Well, I mean, if you look at the way the numbers broke, it really did and, and come down to one or two votes and, and, and in either, you know, in either direction tonight. And so if I'm Davey and it's it's the final seven, you know, a famously crucial vote in Survivor, you know, typically a four three vote. Uh or often a four three vote, not typically, but certainly often. And I I think a vote at that tri at that specific tribal council is probably worth more uh, than an idol sometimes. 
So um, I think that's I think he did the right thing. You think he did the right thing? I mean, he's immune no matter what. Just to revisit that. So it's the final seven. He's going to he's going to get a immunity and necklace. And so that the cost is going to be his vote if he strikes out. So if he breaks one of he has a 50 50 chance to potentially have his idol work for two votes and then another 50 50 chance to have his idol work for up to three tribal councils. But no matter what. He's going to be immune for this tribal council, but he would lose his vote at this tribal council if he strikes out. I'm just right. You know, if he's immune, no matter what, though, does it change? He's not anything? immune. He, it's, it's, it's a hidden immunity idol. He's not definitely immune. But, well, he, that he has a hidden immunity idol that he has to play at one tribal council. So I think right. that if I had no vote, I think I'd play that idol no matter what. I mean, he could he could lose his vote and. Uh, but he could lose his vote and still have the idol. And then, but then he might miss out on the opportunity to impact the decisive vote in the game. So, so he gets the vote, you know, I, I think especially just because it's the final seven mm -hmm. and it, it does so often happen that this, you know, is the hinge at which the end game kind of turns. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right call. So you, you would make the gamble. I, not saying that. I'm saying that was it an easier decision than we saw? It was very funny with the way that they edited that sequence uh, where we saw um, Davey go uh, full cheaty in terms of trying to uh, come up with the right decision to make there. And I thought that was really well edited. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whoever whoever produced that and was like, probably, I imagine someone at the other end of the camera being like, talk us through what you're thinking right now. I think that's a great, that's great. That was fantastic. Yeah. I love that. So um, that was fun. But I, I'm just asking if, if maybe because he's immune, should do we have the, a, an official declaration of like no you should definitely in that spot do that no i'm saying there's a, that's not an official declaration mm -hmm. um the the you know on the other hand all right just to talk through just to deviate and talk through the the, the other side of the, of the equation if he he's got this immunity idol if or he knows he's probably not a target tonight, at least as far as he knows, if he gets the idol for one more vote, that's through the final six. So he really just has to um, deal with one tribal council at the final five. I, I don't know. I, I still think I still think the vote is the vote is probably the vote is probably more important here with it we're yeah. looking at a potential uh four three vote but i i do like where they've taken that chris noble thing that we saw at the merge in survivor yes. uh ghost island and moved it to the final seven where potentially he could have an idol that is a full idol until the end of when you could play idols as opposed to chris noble could have been immune for the tribal council at the final 13 12 and 11 so i think Right, that, right. You know, the val the idol is more valuable later on in the game, and I and I like that it was the opportunity for an advantage as opposed to just hiding another idol after one got played. So I thought that that was that was all well executed. Uh, Stephen, uh, who got the fishy tonight? Well, obviously, Mike yeah, did. That, I, I this mean, was Mike's strongest night of the series. So do you feel like that Mike is in a really good spot to potentially win now at this point? I mean, I think the thing that's hurting, I actually think, I mean, the thing that's hurting Mike the most is just being like white, right? The very fact of being a successful Hollywood screenwriter, actor, I think it would be hard for someone to vote for him to win a million dollars. Now, if he was there against two people who the rest of the jury really felt didn't deserve it, yeah, probably they would still vote for him anyway. Um, so I, yeah, I, Mike is in a great spot, uh, especially because, I mean, yeah, but, with with Nick and Davey kind of on the on the on the wane, mm -hmm. and I, yeah, and, and Mike sort of having a lot of strategic credibility. What what happens if it's Mike, Allison, and let's say Angelina? Because I, I think Angelina is going to be the final tribal. I think we're going to see her talking about Rice. I'm hoping like more than more than anything. Now that Christian's out of the game, what I'm rooting for this season is Angelina's speech about Rice at the final tribal council. Yeah. Um, so what is the question here that, well, who would win if it's, well, a, if it's Angelina, Allison and Mike? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they've presented Allison as somebody who is formidable, but I believe that Mike said in the episode tonight that Allison can't win in the end. So Mike, that he uh, has, you know, made some, made some good moves here in back to back weeks. And I think that this is his signature move in the game. How how is it received by the other people that are on the jury? I mean, they I mean they've all tried to eliminate Christian. They have to respect the one guy who actually succeeded at it. Yeah, 
And I wonder if this could be the scenario where if Kara could be in the final three with an Angelina and a Mike, is this is this Kara's path to the win? That, I, I think that's probably if if Kara wins, that's probably how she does it. Right. Yeah. Where if the jury does not want to vote for Allison and Mike is there also and people are saying like, hey, uh, you know, some a, a bias against Mike of like, hey, uh, maybe if this guy wasn't already a successful person, we would give him the win. But, uh, you know, I didn't come to Survivor to reward somebody who's already done well. So, uh, you know, we'll give it to Kara. Yeah. I mean, so you think you really think it's going to be Nick and Davey are just like the next two to go. I don't see a path for them. Tell me tell yeah. me what, what you see. I mean, why would anybody want to take them a uh, little into the final three, but to the final four where they could make a fire? So it's it's there's two votes, right? Like it just whoever's not eliminated next just needs to win immunity once. Yeah. So one of them needs to win. And so like, I, I just feel I feel like that that Davey and Nick uh, uh and both, I think that they both misplayed this round. I, I think that the last thing they should have been doing this round was getting rid of Christian. Uh, yeah. Well, well, Davey didn't try to get rid of Christian. He I tried mean, Davey, to get rid of Nick. Uh, yeah, but but Nick, I think, is more dangerous with this. I uh, so when Davey orchestrates the Nick vote, right? He. Well, Davey, and ultimately Davey actually voted for Allison. At, at the time that Davey was orchestrating the Nick vote, he thought that Nick had two idols, which makes him basically uneliminatable. So it totally makes sense that he would he would want to take him out now. Keep Christian. I, I think Davey's po point of view it makes a lot of sense. Keep Christian around as as a giant target. Take out Nick with his you know hypothetical two idols, and then he's left there at the at the final five, and and you know or he's he's there at the end game. I, I don't know. I think, but you have to get there. I, I know that we're starting, you know, we're like, oh, it's better to lose at the final eight, the final seven, than, you know, lose in the end. Uh, but I, is it? Well, I mean, if you're doing the right things, yeah. Like, I think it's better to like make the play that can set you up to win rather than to, to not make any play and be guaranteed a loss. Now, guarantee, like, granted, like that play might not pan out, but you have to at least try. Yeah. But if you are really sabotaging your road to get to the end, then uh, yeah, I guess in a vacuum, it's great to make that that big move. But what is the what is the path there? I guess for Davey, he felt like that he had this path with himself, Christian, Allison, and Kara. That was going to be his group. But we saw for the second week in a row where people are thinking, okay, well, oh, this is the four that, or this is the group that I want to go with. But that group isn't necessarily on board with that plan. But I don't understand why you don't like Davey's move here. Like I, I get, I get not because loving because uh, it didn't work. Well, the what? Which move didn't work? <laughs> because he told Kara about the plan, and then Kara went into, and Kara was not a trustworthy person to tell the plan to because oh, she Rob. told it to Allison, and then Allison told. So if you have a plan that is that is is not f you know uh, foolproof or at least leak proof, then it's not a good plan. But no plan at the final seven is going to be leak. -proof. But I'll tell you I mean, what was good about Mike's plan. He came up with it right before tribal council. And I think that well, this is the thing where timing, you, timing, you yeah. make up a plan three days before the vote and it gets out and, and you make yeah. up a plan, you know, the, the right after the challenge that that plan has a better chance to work. So you, you're saying it's not necessarily the time, the, 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 facts of Davy's plan it was the timing of, of how of when he tried to pull it well, off timing is everything so the, i mean the right. same thing happened to gabby last week where they're like yeah this was a good idea get out get out christian but then ultimately enough people got wind of the plan and you had to tell too many people and then ultimately it ended up backfiring on gabby and then this plan ended up not working out for for davy and then uh, ultimately this was a bad week for nick I think that's a really great point and, and maybe a fundamental way in which Survivor has shifted in you know, the last maybe five, six, ten seasons is that it used to be that people would come up with a plan and then they would, to quote a great man, stick to that plan. They would, you know, you'd, ha you'd have a plan and that would be your plan. And the, the challenge of the game would be sort of making sure everyone was still on board with the plan. But now they just love to scheme so much. People love to strategize. They love to scheme. And so whatever the plan is, the day before Tribal Council, people want to do something new. It's already boring. Like the thought of it is already old mm -hmm. news by the, by, the, by the time Tribal Council. So I think you're right. Like maybe that's the lesson and the takeaway here is you've really got to wait to till the last minute uh, before you propose the actual plan. You propose like a dummy plan. Uh, and then, you know, you let everyone sort of spin in circles and then you come in with the real plan. Right, right. So you want to be the, the target like at the reward challenge.
And or, then, you know, and and then like, so like ideally you want to be the like the like as Angelina has played well, well like uh, you want to be the decoy boot like going into the like uh, the immunity challenge and then yeah. post immunity challenge then they'll be like it didn't work out for Alec that great but uh, that you know in in a big moves era where people want to play fast and want to be the Arthur of their own fate then it, I think it is good to uh, not be the first plan. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a really that's or to a really be the good first plan. plan. Uh, to not be the first. Well, plan. you want to be have your name come up as the first. If if everybody is oh. talking, if it's two days away from tribal council, everybody's saying like, "Hey, let's get out Stephen tonight." That's the good yeah, place yeah, yeah, to yeah. be. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's because exactly it'll right. change oh, eight times yeah. by the time. Now, and then you, what you don't want is for it to change to somebody else and then change back to you by the time. You <laughs> yeah, get you've really got to like stay the, as the plan until the very last yeah, minute. Yeah, so you want to uh, stay uh, two steps ahead uh, yeah. if if you can. Uh, Stephen, uh, what else from uh, from tonight? What else did you see that you liked? I mean, so many great moments. We certainly talked about Angelina bringing up the rice and the revenge rice, and uh, um, you know, both at the challenge, at the reward challenge, and after the I reward challenge. I thought Jeff was going to give the Jeff was very clear about. All right, we'll give you enough rice to get through ten days. It's not going to be a crazy amount. You're going to have to you're going to have to ration it. And uh, now we're oh, let's make a giant pot of rice. Let's make revenge rice. They might have given them too much rice. <laughs> <laughs> um you know i lo obviously we, we didn't talk about uh jeff's wonderful um uh ball he was really going for it tonight that, that, he, this might have been the most extreme that we've ever seen him yeah and there was a point in survivor history where i feel like that we were doing it a lot but i feel like that we kind of got away from it and i think we were back with a vengeance tonight i, I, oh I wanted a live look in at dr mike tonight uh if he was going to be able to contain himself <laughs> well, I used to like wonder, is it unintentional? Is this just sort of uh, is he, like how in on the joke is he, he? Obviously, he's very in on the joke when he's talking about you don't want your balls clanging together and you don't want them separating. And, you know, both of someone, Kara's balls descending at the same time. Yeah. Look, he's in on it. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, you think he's very in on it, but uh, oh, yeah. it had been a while since they, uh, we had had that in there. And then, uh, but this is like a, a, a challenge where that comes up a lot. This is always uh, a, a classic at this challenge. All right, Stephen, uh, before we get to questions, let me take a moment and talk about our sponsor here tonight, our friends over at canvaspeople.com. I know so many listeners oh, wow. are already uh, getting Canvas People as a uh, great gift uh this time of year uh i showed everybody last week this wonderful the wonderful photo that was sent to the survivor know-it-alls uh to commemorate another great season it's hanging up here in my office this wonderful 11 by 14 canvas photo that i only hope that our listeners uh use the promo code to get their hands on of course that promo code to get your zero dollar canvas people print for free is rhap text that word to 79 79 79 so easy to do take all of these photos that are on your phone on your camera and just upload them at canvaspeople.com turn your photos into a beautiful canvas work of art that will be getting uh, so many compliments whenever you have people at your home they'll say well that your home is like an art gallery because you have so many wonderful canvas photos here at your home and it's so easy to do. Go ahead and give it a shot with this very special limited holiday offer. Canvaspeople.com is offering their 11 by 14 photo canvas for free. That's right, for free. Normally $69.99, but for this week, you'll pay nothing. Just cover the shipping and the handling to get your free Canvas People photo. Text the word RHAP to 797979. You just pay the shipping and the handling. This offer won't last. Text RHAP to 797979. That's RHAP to 797979. Message and data rates may apply. Okay. Uh, canvaspeople.com. Okay. Yeah. Steven, uh, did you get any Canvas Peoples to photo your, uh, or to commemorate your 10 year anniversary of the Survivor Token Chains Final Tribal Council? Oh, can you believe it? 10 years. I should get a nice big one of Yeah, uh, you really, me that, uh, that's one. so much, so much talk about your 10 year anniversary. Yeah. It's ten years. Ten years. Yeah, uh, that uh, a, lot, so, a lot of years. Yeah, uh, blogs, articles, uh, so much, so much hoopla. <laughs> well, it was, it was one post that I posted on Facebook, and then I also posted it on Twitter, and then uh, you know Andy Dennard, who it was runs picked reality up Alert, in the in the mainstream media. Yes, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did it. Like I, and Andy and I actually, well, what was great too is that Andy also reposted the first interview that I did with him in Survivor Token Chains, where I was talking about what a great player Rob Sesternino was and how I wanted to learn all the tricks from Rob Sesternino. And yes. Boy, was, have I been disappointed over the yes, years. Yes, that uh, oh, yeah. you, had, you had said, I read the article that you said that you wanted to play just like me except win. So you, even, yeah. you were well, even shading me from before we ever met. <laughs> well, I didn't want to play just like you. I didn't want to get to third and then crap out. My God. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the, yeah, I did say at the time, though, that I found your game to have fundamental flaws. And I'll, I'll stand by that. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get to some questions here with uh, T Stephen Fishback uh, in between his 10 year anniversary of the final tribal council <laughs> and his honeymoon. Uh, Stephen, let's, let's take a question from Megan. Wait, wait, wait. So Allison told Mike about Nick's vote. Nick told Mike about the Allison vote. Nick told Davey about the fake idol and Mike told Nick about the Davey betrayal. Yes, precisely. Um, Nick told Davey about the fake idol and Mike told Nick about the Davey betrayal. Yes, yes, yes. And what do you think that Davey reacted too quickly to the, to the, to being left out of the Nick idol information? Yes, I, I think he yeah. did. And, and I think that there was already a disconnect all, between Davey and Nick from the Christian thing, because I, I really think that this is a, uh, a, a, a thing because that Davey went behind Nick's back to tell Christian yeah. about the vote. So I think in Davey's mind, there was already a disconnect. And I think that in a way to sort of then, okay, now I have this piece of information that Nick doesn't have. This is my opportunity to get him out. I think that we saw what played out between Gabby and Christian last week played out between Davey and Nick this week. For yep. up, up until the point when Davey came to his senses and said, what am I doing? I can't vote out Nick. Yeah. Well, do you think, do you think Nick ultimately, if Davey hadn't changed his mind, would Nick ultimately have gone home? Uh, I'm not sure because Mike didn't want uh, Nick to go home. So no, but he still, you know, to at least if, if Kara had still been in on the Nick plan and Allison had still been on the Nick plan, um, that's still four votes for Nick. Yeah, but Al, we saw Allison pull Mike aside, and I don't think she would have done that without Mike. So I think that yeah. Allison, who was like the fourth person on that alliance where it was like, okay, Christian and Davey are tight, and then Davey and Kara are seemingly tight from when they were together. And then it's like, okay, oh, Kara, can you go get Allison also to be the fourth person on this vote? I, I don't know if they necessarily, uh, if Mike says, hey, this is a bad idea, don't do it if Allison then goes and does that vote without Mike being on board. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh it's a, it's a, it's it would have been interesting to see if how that would have played out, but I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Noah Naaman asks, are there, there are probably already over 100 voicemails asking, which is worse ball separating or coming together? What do you think, Rob? Are there, are there over 100 voicemails asking that? I don't know, but you can get your voicemails in. Rob has a website.com slash voicemail or three, two, three, two, eight, two R H a P. And of course, uh, only Dr. Mike could answer that question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a question. Edric says, uh, Davey was quick to rescind his plan to blindside Nick after their one-on-one. -on -one. Is this an emotional reaction? And should he have stuck to his guns? It What's is interesting the lesson like, it, that we should have learned from this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely the lesson with Nick in terms of sharing information with your. I mean, Nick definitely stumbled. I think with the finding the idol, making it really public. Look, I've got this idol. Of course, the information travels back to Davy. So Davy, who knows about Nick's existing idol, is going to worry. Oh my God, Nick has two idols now. Um, but let's so just that's play, let's just play this out. Okay, so hypothetically, okay, so me and you, me and you are playing. Of course, you know, uh, we're going. We, we, you know, we're 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 the new Stephen and JT. And oh wow! So okay, can I can I be JT this yes, time? Yes, you're JT. I'm yeah. Stephen. And so yeah. with that now, but now now I'm going to tell somebody a story about something. Uh, do I need do I need to come back and tell you like hey just so you, in case you hear anything? I told everybody that I have a fake idol. Just so you know, you heard, I want you to hear it from me first. Uh, yes. I think, yeah, I think you I have think, to. 
I think you've got to like close that loop because especially now, and again, like I do think the game has changed since the, so, you know, since, since 10 years ago when my, when my final travel council happened, um, where I do think people are like, I think everyone is more playing against each other now in a way that people there, there I think there was more loyalty back in the day. Um, and so I think you do need to close that loop pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that you have to, and I, I think that there was a disconnect between, uh, Davey and Nick going back to that, uh, that Christian vote from, uh, from last week. And I think that that was probably, uh, a big part of this. Uh, Emily has a question. Uh, this is Emily, uh, would Davey, uh, be the Christian of the season if Christian has never been there? Uh, I don't really know what that means. Uh, would- I, I think that, I think there's something to that. I do think like both Davey and Nick would be much, I think be considered now they've, they've been huge characters on this show. Uh, I think they would be considered maybe bigger characters. And I, you know, I don't even know what the word considered means in this, in this context, but um, if, if without, without Christian, you know, I do think they've been overshadowed a little. I mean, you look at, they've pulled off probably as many crazy big moves as, as Dom and Wendell did last season, but they're certainly not as dominant a force as Dom and Wendell. You know, uh, we have not done enough talking about Christian here tonight. And I know it was a quiet night and we're very much uh, talking about like uh, the hour of television that we saw today tonight, but uh, I think it is worth mentioning. Uh, let's talk about the 13-episode uh, arc of uh, Christian Hubicki on Survivor. Yeah, well, I actually, you know, a lot of people, I just wrote this in my blog, a lot of people compare Christian to Cochran, but I actually think, and, and I want your I want your gut reaction here, Rob, I think a better comparison is to Rupert, because Rupert was, A, they went out about the same time in their seasons. Christian is, the, is, is seventh out, Rupert was eighth. You know, when has someone I mean, ever... Cochran was literally seventh out well yeah okay okay fair but like they they you know christian kind of encapsulated this david versus goliath season and ethos in a way he was like the ultimate david he was the david of the davids and the way that sort of rupert kind of was this big pirate character on uh, on pearl islands you know people loved them uh, they were they were strategic yes uh you know and, and people may not remember that rupert was like decently strategic in pearl islands um but what was less relevant about them was their strategy and more their personality their charisma uh how much people love them um and I think that, uh, yeah, I, he was a, a huge character. I'm sure if we had the the million dollar uh, Rupert giveaway now, it would go to Christian. Yeah. Um, and uh, really, a, a, just a, a fantastic uh, character and player. Yeah, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. That uh, Christian uh, is looked at as somebody that if he gets to the end, he'll win. We have to take him out because he's a threat. Certainly, that was not the case. Why uh, the why Cochran went out the first time around in terms of being looked at as this huge threat to uh, win the game and was sort of uh, you know iconic in terms of the theme. So uh, I, I could see what you're saying in terms of uh, being uh, Rupert uh, Rupert esque so, on some level and on many yeah. levels not Rupert esque. <laughs> <laughs> listen rupert pearl islands take take your mind back to a more innocent time okay all right uh what about uh let's do another question this is edric uh has allison been intentionally downplaying her challenge performance to lower her threat level um i know she she was the runner-up in this challenge i mean she almost won it she was there if you if she were intentionally downplaying she, you take a dive at the right but you know right, right and at the don't beginning. win the first immunity challenge when you're not in danger also um yeah, yeah. what about Paige? All right, Paige wants to know, how much did Davey hurt his game by trying to gun for Nick tonight? It seemed Allison would have gotten voted out had Mike not spilled the beans. Yeah. Um, so hypothetically, I'm not sure necessarily uh, if we had the, the group that stuck together at that last vote. Uh, you know, Davey had, was in a good spot where that he was presented a final four deal at the reward where it was Davey, Mike, and Nick and Angelina. And they said, this feels good. This is the final four. We saw Davey say, I don't know. I, I, don't like, I don't like this. And so Davey then went and tried to disrupt what was going on with voting out Christian last week. But I wonder, had Davey stuck the course and then at the reward challenge said, all right, I'm, t- I'm bringing my, you know, my final four with me. Let me take Mike and let me take Angelina. Let me take Nick and, 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 and okay, Angelina, you make up some good points here. Let me take Angelina. Um, I wonder, is it possible, could that foursome have stuck together, maybe voted out Christian? Christian tonight, 
but then it would have then uh, stuck, to, you know, not gone down the path of vote out Nick, and then maybe be set up where now the next two boots were looking like Kara and Allison, and then Davy and Nick have a much better shot at the final four. But do you think that's a real possibility just because some people set it on a reward? Like every reward, people are like, this is it. This is the five. This is the seven. Like that's what everyone says. Literally every reward. I don't know. Well, that uh, he we have no idea. We have no idea. It seemed like that the, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of talk that that was going to be the case. Had he taken yeah. Angelina, I do think that Angelina is pretty loyal where if, you know, uh, you know, she knows where her bread is buttered. If you scratch her back i think that she does seem to want to reciprocate yeah yeah no i mean I, I, maybe, maybe so i just don't i just don't necessarily think that like they're gonna take davy over nick you know or, or or why take davy over nick you know why why would why like nick you know has, has have obviously has a better relationship with angelina and with mike just from from Japanese days yeah but this is to go to this is to stick with that final four that voted again. I mean, they had that that great you. I mean, you always talk about how a, you know, a, a plan coming together can really, uh, you know, make a make a group whole. So right. they this is the group that split their votes against uh, against Gabby and Christian last week. Right. That right. I, yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, coming in coming into this. This vote, uh, it, it did feel like that foursome had some momentum before Davey turned on Nick. Yeah, it could be. And, and I mean, it was Davey I, talking bad about Nick to Kara that really sort of uh, got us on this path tonight. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I really took, uh, you know, what, what, what Davey said to heart at Tribal Council. You know, he, he, called, he used this term voting blocks and how every every episode there was a new yeah, voting uh, block. Kudos, I there, kudos I for to Davey for uh, really putting a fine <laughs> point on, on that. And I have not heard it described that way. So good job by Davey. <laughs> And and if you ever hear anyone else in any in any other context in a movie or a TV show say voting blocks, definitely tweet Davey about it. Is this voting block, Stephen? I think so. It sure looked like it to me. What I mean, are the you blocks know, the then? I, but that's the point of the block is that they people come together. It's a shifting groups and they come together. For I thought that the voting and, blocks were okay. These two people are together. These two people are together. These two people and you might and and these two people might vote with these two people on this tribal council. But then maybe I mean this seems like that. Any any given group of people could be on any side at these tribal councils. Yeah, that's really true. That is really true. That it does seem. I mean, you know, to your point, Davy and Nick. I'm sorry, Davy and uh, Christian seem to be together. Obviously, Christian and Gabby had a thing happening. Uh, Angelina and Mike are real. Relatively, it's like consistent. you're a voting block. Okay, me and Stephen are a voting block. But it's like ah, can't beat Stephen. All right, got to get rid of him. This tribal council. So it's like yeah. you're that these blocks are break very easily. Yeah, the voting blocks very unstable. I don't know. This is not voting blocks. I don't think this is just uh, uh, this is like Brant Steele. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. All right. Jonathan Lillian wants to know. Alex, uh, Allison keeps calling herself a threat, but is yet to be voted out. Is making yourself publicly known as a meat shield a new way of preventing yourself from being voted out? Well. People do seem to talk about Allison being a threat. It seems like there's there's a disconnect where that Allison talks about herself as a threat. Nick talks about her as a threat. Uh, we see Christian talk about Allison as a threat. It's only the people that watch the show say Allison is not a threat. So I, I I tend to believe the people that are there more so than what we're seeing with our eyes. For whatever reason, it's not necessarily translating to the show. Well, but do you well, I mean about that question? Do you think is it is it a legitimate strategy to say? I'm a threat and therefore present yourself as a meat shield and therefore people want to keep you because you're a threat. Is that what she's doing? Uh, no, that was the, what the question was. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem like a great strategy to me. Yeah, I, I think it's a bad strategy. And the reason is for something Allison actually said, uh, I think this week, uh, I think it was this week. It's like once you're on the threat list, you're always on the threat list. Mm -hmm. And as a result, if you, define yourself as being a threat then people are gonna you know consistently con like con like conceive of uh try to try to take you out the other thing is it's much easier to play survivor and like mo more fun when people are not targeting you when people are actively trying to get you and you're constantly scrambling to like to try to pull people into things and everyone's lying to you and like they're clearly not interested in your plans that's not that fun <laughs> it's really fun when people hold on, are I, wanna, not hold on. I wanna get this get this straight okay. so, <laughs> yeah. right, so when everybody's trying to vote you out on survivor it's not, not fun, fun. Yeah. Not as fun, but when you, no one is trying but to vote you out. when you're voting people out and everybody's not trying much, to get you, that is fun. It's much more fun. Not even just like the actual part of being voted out, but just like being the target is so much less fun than targeting other people. Yeah. What can you do then? 
I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. You hope hope that, that it's, uh, things shift. I was thinking about this. Stephen. W- what if you were went on Survivor and then said to everybody, like, hey, just don't vote me out. <laughs> just like, uh, like I, 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 look, I know it's, it's uh, there's a lot of stuff going, but just 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 do me one favor. Just don't vote me out tonight. Yeah, that well, that's sort of what uh, Christian was saying, right? Like, and at, at, at tribal council, he was it's like, "It's too I, late at tribal guys. council. Uh, this is a go up to everybody one on one." That's interesting. The one on one, don't vote me out conversation. I don't think we've ever seen that tried. It really could revolutionize huh? the game. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a great idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, See, but you said if you want to vote me, if you want to vote me out, write R O B on paper. You had it exactly wrong. Please don't vote me out. Don't write. R-O-B yeah, but I felt paper. that I, I, I knew that I wasn't going to vote it out. I, I knew I had, yeah. uh, you know, my uh, my friends that were going to have my back. But uh, I was like, if you two want to go ahead and write my name down, that's fine. But nobody else around here. They, nobody else do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Sophie, Sophie H. Uh, hey, Robin, Stephen. I was wondering if you felt uh, that Mike has a legitimate chance at winning after tonight's Christian vote. I know he didn't vote Christian, but he seemed like he orchestrated it, and I think he certainly did. So what does a Mike win look like, Steve? What does Mike have to do to win the game? I think that it, it all depends on who you're there with at the end, right? So it, it's it's half of it is about what you've done and half of it and, and probably most of it is about the jury liking the other two people less. So I think Mike has to be there with people who the jury doesn't want to win. Now, who are those people? Uh, I think Angelina is probably one. Right. I think Angelina is probably one. And the question is, you know, there's obviously animosity towards Kara, right? Dan is is super salty towards her. Maybe Dan has poisoned his brochachos against her. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the combination. Yeah. I think also hurting Angelina is uh, the way that she got into uh, the altercation with uh, the uh, mayor of the jury in Elizabeth at that first vote. I think that that, uh, Elizabeth probably did not love Angelina going out of the game in terms of the way that they got into it. So I think that there's probably been a lot of anti-Angelina talk at the jury. So she's a good person to go to the end with. But the question is going to be for Mike, who is that third person? Yeah, um, the the it, it's it's a really good point though that you know in terms of pissing people off, the person you least want to piss off uh, are the people who are the first out, and I think the people who are the last out because yeah. the people who are the first out really do set the tone for the jury in terms of and and then they're like vendettas stew and stew and stew. Mm-hmm. But then the people who are the last out are the ones who are coming with like the hot new information right before you make that final vote. Yeah. Uh, and so they're like the ones who can also have a disproportionate impact. And another thing that we were talking about right at the merge was like, hey, these Goliaths would have to be crazy to go to the end with a David. And I think that that's yeah. another uh, another big point against Nick and Davey and these and these Davids that turned on each other. You set that you you got yourselves in a position where now the Goliath can say, hey. Guys, what are we doing? We don't want a David in the end because there's no way the jury will vote for a David when it's if it's not if it's two Goliaths and a David. So we have to take out the two Davids. So now David, uh, Davy or Nick has to go on a run here to get to the end. One. So there's only two votes left, right? Only whoever's left. Six and just five has and to... make a fire. That's the that's the yeah. plan for Davy or Nick. Right. Or, or, just, or you just gotta... find an idol, win a win a challenge, and make and, and make a fire. Well, you can play the idol at five, right? Which I, right. which is, I think, a huge problem with the game. So probably the idol will be will be put back into the game. The only two people who look for these things are Davey and Nick. So one of them so, has a great chance to find an idol. Somebody could win a challenge, and now and now you're in business. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, by the way, huge flaw in the game. Idol should not be playable in the in the tribal council before fire making. Okay. I, I mean that's um you know that that's definitely been uh, been said. You know that uh, I, I don't think anybody really disagrees with you on that. Okay. Um, Great. Good. Yeah. But in terms of exciting TV, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be glad that they could play them uh, at this final five. Um, yeah, I guess so. You know, it gives a uh, gives a uh, gives. I guess that's the point. Is it gives the underdogs a, a real good shot? Yeah. So I mean, that's the plan. But if, if you're a Goliath, you are crazy if you are even contemplating taking one of these uh, Davids to the end. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Literally, the theme is David versus Goliath. The theme is don't is reward the Davids. And uh, yeah, they've got to they have to be thinking that as well. Okay. All right. Let's do uh, one or two more questions here with Steven. What about Paige? 
My page wants to know, in hindsight, don't you think it was detrimental to Nick's game to play a fake idol he knew was fake? Should he have left his fake idol under the raft for Davy to find? Well, um, I, I we've talked about that. We don't think that this was this worked out great for Nick, and that'll be a great question to ask Nick. Of why did he feel compelled to find his own fake idol in front of in yeah. front of everybody? It was great TV, but ultimately, what did what did it buy him? That uh, right, you know, yeah. uh, that you know that David Wright did so well in season uh, thirty three. Where he, uh, you know, got Jay to find the fake idol, and then, uh, you know, ultimately it got him to Jay to stop looking for the real idol, which ultimately Adam is going to find at the final five. But here, that for for Nick, uh, he find a, he found the fake idol. It made Davy distrust him, and then ultimately he didn't even find the real idol after, in, in, after all that. Yeah, yeah, it, it certainly didn't work out to, to his advantage. Yeah. All right, the survivor. But what, about, but what about Nick playing the fake idol first? Did you like that? Where? Oh, I love that. That was great. It, it, you know, like just to try to get. I mean, obviously he got the wrong read, but it was great to try to get the the read of the room. I, I felt like that Nick was lost in that moment. I felt like that he was uh, sort of like uh, you know I'll play the fake idol and then he didn't see anything. I, I really felt for him. Like uh, it's like where 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 did I park? Uh, where? <laughs> ah, ah, what do I? Uh, what, what level am I on? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, and, and I felt, and, and he says that after the vote, like I wasted it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Tough stuff for uh, for Nick on that episode. Okay. Uh, let's do one more question with Stephen. Okay. That's a good one. Blade Blur wants to know the Davids completely squandered their majority, and now they went against each other. Do Nick and Davy have any shot of winning this? Will any Goliath even think to team up with them after their? No. Idol let's play? do one more question after this. Okay, but I think that yes, I think that's what we've been talking about. You know, I don't. I I think if Nick or Davey makes it to the final tribal, they're almost certainly going to yeah, win. Yeah. Uh, right? Goliath would be crazy to take them to the end. Okay, uh, but but they uh, yeah, they've got a clear shot. I think there's a clear shot. I don't think I, I'm not as uh, who has a as clear shot. Either of the Davids. No, they're. I mean, they 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 need a a Dreebergen esque miracle at this point. I don't think it's that Dreebergen esque. You know, like they're literally. I mean, from what we've seen, they're the only two people looking for the idols. And so it's not unreasonable to think one would find them, which which would inoculate them at the. You know, only one of them can be voted out at each tribal council, right? They can't like bo vote both of them at the final six. That means there will definitely be one of them there at the final five. If that one is also has the idol, um, all, then that all they have to do is make fire. Okay, so. You think that one of them could find the idol, be safe, find the idol again, or no? They just need to find the idol once, and then have the other person be the one voted out. Or like as Davy's leaving because he was voted out and forgot to play his idol, he like tosses it to Nick. I mean, I, it yeah. doesn't seem that crazy to me that like one of them would have an idol that they would know to play it at the final five. Yeah, but, and then, but then, Stephen, you don't get the you don't get to pick who the other side votes out at the final six. So if you have an idol, you can't say, "Well, I'll, I'll play it next round." When they split the votes against uh, <laughs> uh, Nick and Davy. Right. Well, so you play it and then you got to win one immunity. It's not crazy to think that one of them would win an immunity either. Right. So you but it's going to need some combination of immunities, idols and fire. Doesn't seem that crazy, that far fetched to me. Give me a percentage but, uh, chance. One of them gets to the end. Twenty five. OK, I, I would uh, probably go a little lower, but uh, it's not great odds. I, I would go higher. I, I'm going thirty five for how many? Thirty five. Thirty five. I would definitely I take the under on that. Okay. Knowing is know it all. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 I think you made a bad bet there. Uh, yeah. You bet on something that you felt only had a thirty-five percent chance of happening. Yeah, but I like I like to see the action. I like the action. Okay. It's wow. not about winning. Wow. It's about I could the, come about into the uh, season thirty-eight as the knowing is know it all. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a huge target. Okay. Every you guys saw that right? You saw that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, then let's uh, do, uh, I guess, last question with Tara. Do you think that Davey made the right decision uh, to uh, not play the game that would extend his immunity idol life uh, by one week? Uh, yeah, I think we ultimately came down that Davey did make the right decision to uh, to not play the game. Um. Yeah, I think so. Right. You, so you, I, I thought you were taking the other side. I thought you thought. No, I just it. wanted to get like uh, sometimes I watch it and I say like, okay, well, this is what I, you know what I think, but I want to make sure I'm not missing something here. Right. And I wanted to know if like uh, we've sort of come to you know a lot of people crunch the numbers on these things. We wanted to uh, make sure that it, this was not like one of these things where you know oh statistically you know uh, it, you should always you know uh, go for it because you're if you're safe it doesn't matter. Um. Final eight, would you do it? 
I, I think that's more likely where you don't necessarily yeah. uh, need a, uh, f- a, a f- it's sort of like what the opposite of the uh, vote advantage, right? I would probably do it at the final eight. Okay. All right. I mean, depending on, depending on the circumstance, obviously. Okay. Uh, next week, Stephen Fishback uh, is going to be off enjoying a wonderful honeymoon and uh, we will be here. I will, I will not be going to the finale for the first time in, uh, in, in five seasons. Mm. And so I will be here with you guys live, and we got a great panel where we will be talking with uh, two people very familiar with the final four twist as uh, Dominic Abate and Chrissy Hoffbeck will. Oh, that's fun. Yes, it should be a very fun panel uh, live yeah. after the finale with uh, the last two runners up of Survivor to talk about everything going on at the Survivor 37 finale. So uh, we'll see if uh, for the third season in a row, this fire making challenge looms large over the outcome of the season. Yeah, it's it does it, the, the person who wins it is the is the winner of the show, right? Is that that's happened both times? That's happened that, both times. Three times is a trend. Yeah, that three times is a trend. Um well, thank you so much, Rob. What a fun season it's been. What a fantastic season of the show and what a great season of podcasting the know-it-alls with you. I thought this was a very good season of the know-it-alls. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay. All right, let's talk about what's coming up here uh before we uh let Steven go for 2018, okay? Let's uh here's what else uh news AF uh, Tyson Apostle, Danny and I talk about, uh, have you seen this trailer for the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie, Stephen? No. Yeah, Is Sonic the Hedgehog looks like Stephen Fishback in his CrossFit days in the new Oh, wow. For... He's, he's very handsome and jacked yes. with glasses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, oh. we talked about that and much more on this week's edition of News AF. And of course, Survivor Exit Interview. You won't want to miss this one. Christian Hubicki. And then I play this week in Survivor History against Kellen Bechtold, jam-packed final uh this week in survivor history quiz on our exit interview with christian and then jeremy and val had such a wonderful time with them at steven's wedding this summer going to talk mm. about uh everything Remin- reminisce reminisce about the we'll food remin- we'll reminisce about everything going on uh cake. and talk about yes and the band and everything <laughs> uh we'll talk about all that and much more with jeremy and val and also jeremy and i in a very high stakes fantasy football playoff match the the tension will be palpable uh between myself and jeremy as uh we are in the final four of the rotten coconuts fantasy football league uh and then oh aman will be on the rhap b and b this week so uh be Mm. on the lookout for that and then uh also why christian lost uh david bloomberg seemed incensed on twitter tonight so i'm sure really incensed yes he will be why i'm sure he will be very riled up to talk about why why christian lost he seems upset uh, that christian got a uh not enough air time tonight we really didn't get into it like what went wrong for christian I guess David will get into yeah. it. Yeah, um, we we can. I mean, do you want to stop down for a second? What what was Christian's uh, major issue? Um. So it, it's. Do you think like the easy the easy place to point is the Carl vote, right? That's, do that's you where think I, that's where I'd start? Yeah. Do you think that it was the Carl vote? I mean, if you're asking for my snap decision, yeah. I mean, I think that um, that night we said, uh, boy. This doesn't seem like a good move for for, for Christian. Uh, this seems yeah. like a, it's a good move for Gabby because she's at the bottom here and then she's like creating her own thing where that she has a shot to go to the end. But then I think that the David's, David's attacking David's uh, spread too much and it's been sort of the story of this last third of the season where the David's have kind of fumbled going into the end zone. Yeah, where like, you know, not only did turning on Carl vote out a really David Strong player who was himself a pretty big target, you know, and and in terms of keeping meat shields, apparently Carl was one. David's got Uh, greedy. That's really what it comes down to. But but that vote also had Christian blindsiding Nick, who, you know, clearly felt very betrayed by that, uh, which, like you said, and, and then the next vote, Nick is is trying to vote out Christian, uh, forcing Christian to play his idol. Well, and Gabby um, wanted to vote out Christian at the next vote, too. Right, right. So I think I I concur that uh, you know 
why I, I think that's a little be a great question for Christian. Why why did he vote out Carl and does he regret it? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh I suspect he doesn't, uh, but we'll uh we'll get into it. Yeah. Okay. Mike Bloom. Yeah. Uh it's a Rob is a podcast tradition. Mike Bloom on the final feedback show at the end of the season. We'll work on a oh, lot great. of great stuff for Mike Bloom on the feedback show coming up this weekend. Get your questions in. And of course, we could not do any of it. We had a really great week of podcasting uh this past week. We could not do it without the support of the Rob has a podcast podcast patrons uh find out more about the rob podcast patron community and everything we have going on when you go to rob has a website.com slash patron all right wait well one last thing my my uh literary interview podcast oh, yes. par paraphrase uh launched on uh on last friday with uh, jeff vandermeer as a guest he's fantastic he gives really great practical advice for anyone who's looking to start their own novel or, or improve their writing uh that's paraphrasepodcast.com paraphrasepodcast.com listen to steven talk talk with authors about how no. they got uh what, what the, the start of uh, their book where they got their inspiration from yeah yeah uh so go ahead and uh and, and check that out all right steven uh, should, is that a good idea for a survivor podcast? Should I talk with uh, survivors about like their day one? <laughs> like, tell me, if it's, uh, I want to all about your your first day. <laughs> where where do they get their inspiration to apply for survivor? <laughs> yeah, go back yeah. go back to the drawing board. All right, uh, Stephen, great stuff. Uh, be sure to read Stephen's uh, blog. Any any other highlights for from the People blog that people should go and check out and read? No, I mean, one of the things I talk about is why Christian was such a threat in, in a way that like because it, it, the fact that he was such a threat was sort of um, disconnected from any of the things that he actually did. You know, if you look at what he was actually doing in the game versus like this obsession that people had with targeting him uh, it, it, there, it didn't necessarily line up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get into it with Christian and much more on our exit interview. Thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes and looking forward to thank you, Scott. another fun week of podcasting. Steven, enjoy your honeymoon and we'll be back oh, uh, next week on the know-it-alls with Dom and Chrissy. Very fun uh, way to close out the season of Survivor. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.